Hey, hello. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about our um, fast read ebook collection that we launched last August. Um, some of our directors brought this idea back from OLA. Um, Ottawa Public Library launched something similar and they reported great success. We do something similar with our print titles, um, so seven day loan, um, two at a time, and no holds. Um, so in Overdrive each month, VPL has over 20,000 holds placed and we just couldn't keep up with buying enough, as you all know. Um, so we wanted to do something about those long queues and give patrons reasons to come back and visit us often in a digital way. Um, so like Ottawa Public Library, we decided to go with Biblioteca's Cloud Library platform, which means dividing our ebook collection into two places, we know. <laughs> um, but we wanted to try it, you know, we still have those overdrive kick us out of the library cooperative thing. So we're interested in trying out other vendors just to see how it goes. Um, so we're only buying the most popular titles from our Overdrive collection. Um, the collection has been really popular. Um, average unique users per month uh, is about 1,200 per month, which is just under 10% of what we're seeing in our Overdrive collection. Um, it goes, I guess, you think about that, 90% of our Overdrive users are exclusive Overdrive users and they're going straight there. Um, that number sort of shows that that's accurate for us as well. Um, I wanted to read you some statistics. So um, I pulled a couple of titles. Um, Becoming, good example. Um, in Overdrive, we've bought 40 copies. In Cloud Library, we've bought 10. Overdrive, we had just under 500 CERCs on those. And in Cloud Library, in the Fast Read Collection, we've had 350. Um, so the cost per use for that title in Cloud Library has been $1.60, and in Overdrive, it's been $4.60. So for those uber super popular titles, Cloud Library is really getting us good value. Um, I pulled another title, the new Louise Penny, which just came out a few months ago. Um, we're still playing around with amounts. We bought 14 copies in Overdrive. We bought 10 in Cloud Library. That one has 83 holds in Overdrive, and there's nine copies sort of sitting on the digital shelf right now, or this morning, who knows, maybe they've all been checked out. Um, so that one, cost per use, is about the same for those two collections. Um, but yeah, we, we are finding a challenge getting people to come back. They probably placed a hold, and now they're just waiting for their title to come in. Um, so yeah, the challenges are getting our committed Overdrive users to know that we have this thing over here, um, and learning a new platform for the public and staff has been a challenge. Um, I know some of you probably have both Cloud Library and Overdrive, or have in the past, and um, so for patrons who've learned about the collection, we've heard great feedback about the titles. Uh, it took us a while to set up the a Biblio Commons integrated borrowing properly. Um, it wasn't, and still isn't, really built for a collection that does not permit holds. So the errors are not really useful, and it doesn't really know what to do with that. So we're still working with Biblio Commons on that. Um, so I don't know if you have heard this, but Overdrive has told me that they are about imminently to launch an express type option for your collections. Is that news? Not news? Yeah, great news, I think. Um, so they've shared with me that it's going to happen really soon. <laughs> <laughs> they said June 10th. That doesn't seem accurate at this point, um, but soon. I've seen a bunch of screenshots. Um, so for this collection, you're going to buy your titles in Overdrive, and you can move the titles in and out of this expressed no holds part of it, which seems like a win-win, because the problems that we've had with Cloud Library is like guessing how many do you put over here, how many do you put over there, and if we were to do it in Overdrive, you just move them around. Um, so that sound, sounds really great, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. Um, so I recommend trying an Express collection. We haven't had any negative feedback from patrons that, oh, you know, this is weird, or they don't really, not really understanding why some people get it right away and they have to wait. Um, but yeah, making your life easier and maybe going with a vendor that you already have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, anyone want to talk about that in more detail? Find me later. So 
I'll just talk about um, Solero, which is basically the online equivalent of the key curriculum guides. So online study help um, and exam prep for the BC curriculum, I think it's from grades 3 to 12 on this one. It covers math, science, and English. Um, what I like about it so far is it includes both the tutorials and the study guides as well, so you actually get a chance to really learn about it, which is great when I'm trying to do grade 6 math mm -hmm. and can't remember how to do all that. Um, it also has customizable uh, flashcards and interactive practice questions you can use as well. You track your progress as you go and parents can optionally uh, track their child's progress as well. Um, so the sign up process was a little bit weird at first. Um, for anyone who's had it for a while, there was like a license thing you had to ignore. It seems to have gone away finally. So you're just logging in with the library card and in. Uh, pick the courses that you want. Um, in your profile, you have the option of actually putting in your name and your email and making a cute little avatar for yourself if you want, but it's totally optional, so otherwise you can just leave it at the barcode be in your name and not enter any kind of email address. Um, once you first start the profile, you're picking your regions of Canada, and you're great, and then you're selecting your courses. Um, when you select your grade, it'll give you the option of doing just that grade's courses, or you get one grade above and below as well if you want, and you can go back and change any of this at any time. Um, the child accounts, uh, you can cancel them at any time as well. Um, for the parent accounts, it is totally optional. So basically, the child would actually have to send an invite to the parent by email address. Um, and the parent then uses that to create an account, which links to several children. If you have to. Um, the child has to both invite the parent and then enter their password again once the parent's account is set up in order to complete the link. So it's very much with the permission of the child. Um, and then once the link is complete, the parent can log in at any time to view the child's activity <laughs> progress and that kind of thing. Uh, licensing is done by number of users. Um, they'll help you estimate how many user licenses you'll need for the year, and they adjust that year by year. The first year we went over quite a bit, um, likely more due to staff testing for the first year than actual use. So um, we were going to be paying a larger amount this year based on last year's usage, so essentially you're kind of paying for a year behind your usage. Um, Everyone's favorite stats. Uh, the monthly reports downloaded from a shared cloud folder are anything that I like about it because it's usually really functional. Functional. I hate waiting until like halfway through the month to get my stats. Um, it does cover the total logins each month as well as the usage breakdown. So all the lessons that people started, the quizzes people started, and the tests people started. So it's fairly, you know, about as good as you get from that kind of resource there. Um, that's kind of all I wanted to say. Anyone have any questions about Solaro? Thank you.